you folks have been asking for this, it's been a popular request. How do you do full screen video, background video in native script? Guess what? That's what we're doing today. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do native script tips, tricks, and tutorials here. I have sometimes have guests over to do other tips, tricks, and tutorials to share with you guys. So subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of those that are coming up. We got some really good stuff coming up here. And yeah, I'm still here in the studio recording the new native script view pro course that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Right now it's available on pre-sale. So if you're into native script view, you might want to go check out nativescripting.com to see the progress. I'll keep you updated on what's going on with that course. I have a beta team of folks that are helping out to build that out. Thank you guys for joining and for sending in your videos and for contributing your ideas on how to make the best course that we've ever had on native scripting. So today we're doing a tutorial that's gonna be pretty short, but it's gonna be super useful and a lot of you have been requesting it. Now you might already know how to create a video in your applications, how to add a video to your applications, or maybe you don't. So today we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna show you how to add a video to your native script applications. I'm also gonna show you how to make that video full screen. So on iOS devices, you know, you have the safe areas and sometimes you just can't get past those areas. I'm gonna show you how to do that, how to get past those safe areas and just have it completely full screen, even behind the status bar. Now this is gonna require a little bit of a trick that I showed you in a previous video. I'll link to that video down below and up here. And that video has to do with Webpack and how it includes files for your distribution. When I was working on adding a local video to my native script app, it was just boggling my mind and I didn't know what was wrong. I was building fine, but the video just wouldn't play. And it turns out the video was missing altogether from my Webpack build. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. I showed you what the problem is and how to fix that for any type of file that you might want to include in your Webpack build and then reference that local file in your code. But today we're doing the same thing with videos. So without further ado, here we go. All right, in this video, we're going to be doing full screen videos. I've been asked how to do this a couple of times on this channel by you guys. So that's what we're doing today. And I'm going to use a little plugin called Native Script Exo Player. This is based on the old plugin called Native Script Video Player. And this uses just a slightly better Android version. It doesn't have as many downloads as Video Player does, but that's because it's kind of new, relatively speaking. In order to install the plugin, I'm just going to follow the instructions here. TNS plugin add Native Script Exo Player. So I'm going to copy that. Let's head out to my terminal where I have my project. I'm going to say TNS plugin add Native Script Exo Player. That's going to go ahead and install the plugin for me. Once it's done with that, I'm just going to say TNS run iOS again to kick off my project. Right now it just looks like this, but we're going to have a video here instead. All right, so here we are in the code in the main page.xml. Now the plugin documentation does give you a usage example, so we're just going to use that. I'm going to copy this page right here entirely, copy that. It also has a native script Angular usage down here, shows you how to do that but we're just doing the native script core version right now. So I'm gonna replace everything right here with that code I just copied. The important thing to pay attention to is this XML namespace. This registers the Excel player plugin with your page element. It doesn't have to be a page. It can be any view really, but whenever you're using Excel player, you need to register it like this, okay? And now we're using it here. So Excel player video, and then we can define it. Now this right now, the source is pointing to a local video, which we don't have. There needs to be a videos folder with this big buck bunny mp4 video but we don't have that so i'm going to use a remote video for now and we're going to run into a problem when i do local videos and i'll show you how to fix that momentarily as well i'm going to replace the source with that remote video and there we go look at that i can just play this video right here and we can do a full screen even but this is not the kind of full screen that we're going to be doing in this video we're going to be covering the entire screen top to bottom with this video all right so you can see that that's a sample video that comes with this you have the controls here which you can turn on and off and you have a bunch of events that you can register let's get a couple of videos in here so i have the app folder here and inside the app folder i'm going to create a new folder called videos and i happen to have a couple of videos already made 
that I'm gonna just drag in there. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. Here they are. One is 20 megabyte file and the other one is a really low resolution file that's only 5.7 megabytes. And the reason I have both of these in here is so I can work with the low resolution file and just get it right. And if I really need to, then I'll use the high resolution file, but I'd rather not. I'd rather not even deploy that with my app because it's a pretty huge file. I mean, you can see it's a 4K file. We don't really need that. So the 480 file might just work for me depending on your use case and depending how you need to use that video. If it's a background video that's playing, you might not even need a high resolution one. Let's go ahead and put that in here. For my source, I wanna use tilde slash videos and then i want to point to landscape and i'll just do the mp4 here the uh, high resolution video and then we can compare it to the low resolution one later and we don't need to use the remote one now because i added new files here i'm going to restart my project so i'm going to go to the terminal and say tns run ios this ensures that all my new files will be picked up sometimes they don't and i just want to make sure and it just takes a few seconds to rebuild it no big deal and there is my app, but wait a minute, my video player is there, but my video is not working. What's going on here? Well, you might've seen my recent video on different file types and how Webpack handles them. Now, this was an old NativeScript project. This would work just fine, but we're using Webpack now. And as of NativeScript, I believe six, Webpack is the only way to go. And everything, all your files get processed through Webpack and this XML file right here gets stored in the bundle that gets generated by Webpack. So this MP4 file must also be processed and copied by Webpack. And it's not right now. That's what's happening. This was driving me a little bit crazy and I didn't know what was going on. And it's not added to the documentation yet what to do in that situation. But here's what you do. All right, go to Webpack config and find the plugins section and then find the copy Webpack plugin section. That's the plugin itself. This is where you instantiate the plugin and where you provide the different glob patterns for files that you wanna use. So I'm gonna make a copy of this PNG one and just place it here and do MP4 here. Now that I've done that, I've changed Webpack config so I need to restart my application. I'm gonna do that again. And now this will find all the MP4 files as well and copy them over to my output directory. Now, once that's done, you'll see that we have our video player and we have our video playing inside of there. So that's one issue that we've solved. Great. Now, how do we make this thing full screen? I want it to fill the entire screen and I want it to be huge. And I also want to overlay some buttons on top of that. Well, okay, we have a couple of things here. You know what? Just for sanity, I'm going to delete the things we don't need here. So I'm going to say auto play to true. We want it to be playing. I'm going to say loop OK, and I'm going to remove the controls because I don't want people controlling this video. I just want it to be full screen and playing in the background. One thing you might want to try is what if I just make this really huge, right? I'll just make this 3000. Let's see what that does. Well, yeah, that makes the height stretched out and the video is now kind of stretched. But you can see at the bottom, we still have that area, the safe area that's the video is not there. And at the top, the status bar, the video is not there either. Well, is it big enough? Maybe I should make it 5,000 just in case. And yeah, you've reached the maximum. So now it's still there and uh, it's not reaching the top. So it's not height. Height is not the way to go. Well, there's also the fill attribute that we can use. What if we use aspect fill? So this will keep the aspect ratio, but fill the screen supposedly. Well, let's try that out. Okay, there it is. Uh, the aspect ratio looks good and it's filling the screen without me setting the height or the width, which is good but we still are not covering that area. So here's what you need to do. You're gonna need to scale X and provide some kind of scale X value that's gonna cover the screen. So I'm gonna say 1.2, let's just give that a try. And scale Y must also be the same. I'm gonna give it 1.2 as well. I don't want it to be too big so that the video doesn't look too crazy and distorted. I just want it to cover that whole space. And now look at that, the video looks good. The video covers the entire screen. You can change the color of the status bar depending on the content of the video. If there is a light background there, you can keep the status bar contents black. Or if you have a dark background, you might want to change the status bar to white 
and I have another video on how to do that. And I go over how to do that. And uh, the course is on nativescripting.com if you want to check that out. All right, so we have our background video, but how do we overlay elements on top of it? Well, right now we're in a stack layout. I'm going to change this to a grid layout to wrap that video player. And when I change it to a grid layout, we're still good. We're still the same here. So that's good. Now I can just add another stack layout inside here so I can add a couple of elements in there. One of them is going to be, let's say, a label. So I'm going to add a label that says text. I'm going to say hi there. And let's give it a class of um, label. And we'll also use a predefined class that comes with a theme called text center. It's going to center our text. And I'm also going to add a button with text that says enter. And we'll give it some predefined classes that come with the theme as well. Let's say outline. And let's say rounded large. Now we don't have this label class defined. So let's go to app.css. I'm going to go down here and define this label class. How do we want this label to look? Well, I want the font size to be pretty large. So let's give it a font size of 30. Let's give it a font weight of bold. And I'm going to give it a color of white. So save everything. That's, um, that's almost what I want. I want the stack layout to be in the middle. So I'm going to add a vertical alignment property here. I'm going to give it vertical alignment property of middle. And that's going to bring that stack layout with the contents towards the center of the screen. So now we have a background video and we have elements on top of it that we can interact with. Now pay attention to that video. I don't know how well it's going to come through in the video that I'm recording, but I want to change it to a lower resolution video, this 480 video, and see if we really notice a big difference. Now people that are going to be looking at the background and examining it and analyzing will notice a difference. But if you just switch it like that and it's a background, then it is noticeable, but it's not too bad. And there is pretty big difference between the 480 video and the 4K video. So there's a lot to play with. You can probably pick something in between that works well. I do like the way the 4K one looks. I've got a bunch of videos coming up on shadows. A lot of people are interested in how to do shadows and I've got a few tutorials lined up on how to do different things with shadows in iOS and Android. It's a commonly requested feature. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. Now, a couple weeks ago, I released this video called Modal Dialog Blur Animation Transition in Native Script. I did a few modal dialog, native modal dialog related videos and how to harness their power. Now, this is a native modal dialog. This is not a custom modal dialog. If you want to do a custom dialog, I have a video on that as well. But this is leveraging the native technology that comes with iOS and Android. And this one specifically has to do with the blur transition in iOS. Now, normally, if you pop open a modal dialog in iOS, the default behavior is for it to slide up from the bottom. And I show you in this video how to do a blur and scale transition instead. Sometimes your apps need to do it that way. If it's part of your UX, if it's a navigation pattern you've been following all along. And uh, this is a useful technique on how to do that. Let's read some of your comments from that video. Malik says, cool, this is exactly what I wanted to try out next for modal pop-ups and image gallery to show portfolio items. There you go, that's a perfect use for it. Video was posted at the right time, what a coincidence. I'm really happy to hear these kinds of comments because this tells me that something like that was helpful to you and I'm glad. Bilal says, really like this vid, I'm looking forward to make a modal that slides from bottom to top but fills half the screen and I want to be able to swipe it down to close it. If you've resolved for such ideas, I'll be happy if you shared it. Well, if you're doing a modal dialogue on an iPad, then this video is perfect for that. I have another video that just recently released on being able to control the size and show the modal dialogue as a pop-up. However, in your case, if you're using an iPhone and you want to have your modal dialogue slide up only halfway, then you're going to want to go for the custom dialogue option. So find that video, you'll be able to style that dialogue however you want, and it'll be the same on iOS and Android. Custom dialogue is what you're looking for below. Sergey says, awesome, catch the thumbs up, happy new year. All right, Sergey, thanks a lot for that and happy new year to you. Mohan says, I'm your fan in NativeScript, wish you a happy new year. This must have been a new year video. Thank you, Mohan, for that as well. Habib says, thank you, please how reduce app size. Example for blank app size is 33 megabyte, is this logical? Well, when you say it that way, uh, it doesn't really make much sense. If it's a blank app, how could it be 33 megabytes, right? But when you think about it, 
You're deploying an app which has a framework in it. The framework is not blank. Your code, your JavaScript code is blank. You might have not added any extra code besides a couple of JavaScript files here and there for bootstrapping like the app.js file. But the framework itself has code. You're talking about the NativeScript core modules that were built by the NativeScript core team. You have to deploy all that. You have to deploy your assets like your launch screen, your images for the icons, all those images that you're deploying in a blank app, they take up space. So yeah, 33 megabytes sounds like quite a bit actually, but uh, you also need to make sure you bundle for production and you wanna make sure that you optimize any kind of assets that you have as well. All right, folks, thanks a lot for watching this video. We're nearing 3000 subscribers. I'm pretty excited about that. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. You can also reach me on Twitter. I'm at DigitAlex over there. And I'll see you in the next one. Happy native scripting.